So Mr. Brinkman will introduce himself and tell you what to expect. So our eyes up here. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Hudson. I don't need to shake everybody's hand. Why not? Your hand is Sure. Okay. So I'm here today to talk about something that you guys have been learning about. Your teachers have told me that you guys are studying the Sudbury River. Is that correct? Yes. Alaska Watershed. Alaska Watershed. Yep. So um, the Sudbury River is part of that, right? What are the other two? The A? That's a bit. Concord. That's right. And what's important about those? That, that system. What's important? Go ahead. Yeah. But why do we need to understand or, or, or relate to it? Why do we have to be good with it? Go ahead. Because it's our water source. Because what? Sorry. It's our water source. It's our water source. That is, that is important. What else is it important for? Exactly. That's a very important thing that we have to be careful with the Sudbury River. So I, I'll tell you a little bit about me and what I do, okay? And then we're going to talk about the river and what the town and how we interact with that, the river and, and what we need to do or what do we need to think about to be better with the river. So I'm the town engineer, okay? Engineer, we, I don't drive a train for a living. A lot of people think that we drive trains. That's a different kind of engineer. Um, but I went to school for a bunch of years to learn about engineering. And that engineering is something that you guys have probably heard. Have you heard of steam? Yeah. All right. So you do steam projects. Well, you have science, right? Technology. We'll skip the E. Well, we won't skip the E. E is engineering. And that's what I do. And then we have arts and math. Now, I know most of you love math, right? No. Yes. 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 I love math, okay? Math, math, math is like another language. It's a, a way of organizing things. It's a way of thinking about things. Math is really important to, to learn because you need math skills forever. You never not need math. And even today, I, last night, I was out getting a cell phone for one of my sons, and we had to look at his plan to make sure that he was done the 24 months. And so we looked at that and said, okay, you're done the 24 months. But you could have, a, you could have gotten your cell phone 20, uh, 18 months ago, and you have to do math to figure out when you can get your next one because it's every two years. So if it's 18 months, how soon can you get your, new, your next cell phone? Six. Six, exactly. You just did math. Um, every job. I, I, I usually ask people about, name a job that you don't need something, a STEM or math involved. And people go, yeah, cheerleading. And I'm like, well, you, if you fall and hurt yourself cheerleading, you need to go to a doctor. And you're going to need that doctor to know science. And he's going to need to know some math. He's going to need to know lots of things. And in cheerleading, it's an art form. It's dance. So it's important. All these things are important to every job. So it's important for you to recognize that and get excited and go into jobs that require these things and learn about it when you're in school because it's much easier to learn about it when you come here every day than it is to learn about it you know when you're 50 years old trying to figure out your next career choice or job so i'm the e and so what engineers do is they take technology and they use science and math so they use all parts of these things to come up with solutions for problems so we, we see a problem and we try to figure it out so, for instance, one problem might be I have a house that I'm building at the end of a road, right? And I want to get water to that house. So I have a water pipe out in the street here. I have to figure out how big a pipe I need to get that water up to the house. So I use math to look at how much flow it needs to get into that house, what kind of pressure do I need to, to have at that house. I do all kinds of things like that. And using math and science, I come up with that pipe size so I can determine whether it's a, a one and a half inch pipe or a three quarter inch pipe. Most, most of the services that come from the street to your house is three quarter inch. Or if I need to put a hydrant up here to put out a fire someday, I need a six inch or even an eight inch pipe to, to make sure that I have enough water to get to that house. But we do math, we do calculations. This, this, this house is on the top of the hill. Well, because it's like, you need pressure. Exactly, you need pressure. Pressure. All right. So, uh-oh. Oh, that's not a... It says it's a... 
Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, is it a Sharpie? Uh, was it a Sharpie? Your cleaner? Your cleaner? Your cleaner? I thought I had the right marker. If it's a Sharpie, you can put yeah, you it. You, you write over it with Expo marker and then you can erase it. Okay. Easy erase it. All right. Yeah. That's like, my then, bad. Then write over it a little bit and then see if that works. And then just erase it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is what happens normally. And it's a much smooth cycle, but we as humans, we get involved in that every day. We're doing a lot of things to, to influence what's happening here. And so in Wayland, I want to talk about some of the things that we're doing. And, and maybe you guys have some ideas of what we might be doing that might be changing what's going on here. Anyone got any ideas? Go ahead. Um, I, I believe something that we're doing is burning fossil fuels. We burn fossil fuels. So how might that influence this process? Um, well, we can get into the atmosphere and just make it not good. Yep, that's true. Could pollute the water. Could what? Pollute the water. Could pollute the water. So what are ways that we can create pollution? Trash. How else might we be, be polluting things? Go ahead. Um, by, by polluting the earth and, and it having it, it have all, the oil mixed with the oil. Oil, oil, oil's a common one. Where might oil come from? The ground. The ground, but also, how do you get to school in the day? Bus, car, car, bus. bus, and you know there's oil in, in, in a bus, and there's a little bit of oil that leaks out of that bus, so where's that oil go? Falls out of the ground, and then we have this this rainfall precipitation, and that carries that oil down into the water. So that's one way that we're influencing this process, this water cycle, and not always in a good way. What's another way we're influencing it? Go ahead. Fertilizer. Yep. So these are all pollution things. I want to talk about other things that we do that are, are not necessarily related to pollution. Does anyone have any ideas for that? You, sir. Pesticides. Pesticides. That's kind of another thing under this topic here. Yes. Global warming. That, that kind of influences all of this because it's changing the way that it's working naturally. Let's think of something really simple. So if, if we put a human here, what might a human do here in this system? What might we do that changes the whole way that it works? Yes? Cut some trees to make it. Cut trees. That's right. So we cut this tree down. The tree is gone. What happens? Transpiration isn't working so well anymore. But you know what else happens? It actually influences storm water a lot because that tree actually is really good at managing storm water. So when the rain comes down, the tree absorbs a lot of rainfall. What happens when that tree isn't there? What happens to that rain? It floods, exactly. So are there other things that we do that might change flooding? Yes. Littering, that, that kind of over here. Littering is a pollution type thing. Yes using too much water. How do we use water? Where do we get that water from? From the ground. So, so that's another thing. We have this percolation where the water's running into the ground. And so we put in a well, it's a pump, under the ground, and that's sucking the water out. So that changes the way that the water's flowing through the ground. We take that water and we use it. How do, what happens after we're done with it? Where does it go? Back in the ground. How does it get back in the ground? It evaporates. Yes. Um, it goes through the pipes. And it goes through the pipes. It goes and through the drain, and then it goes to the sewers and, and the ground. So most of most of people in, in Wayland, it actually goes into a septic system. So there's a little <coughs> box out front in there in your yard that actually takes the wastewater from the house, and that goes into a, a tank under the ground. And then it leaches out and it yeah. percolates to the ground. But that water's got a lot of pollution in it from, you know, how we use it, washing our hands with soaps and the detergents, the food from, you know, uh, the leftover food when you wash your plates. All that stuff ends up, and that goes into the ground. So we're disturbing that process. We're actually adding pollution to the, to the groundwater. And we're, we're moving that water around as we do that. Yes? GMOs. I didn't expect a fifth grader to talk about GMOs. Uh, GMOs, that's kind of a, a pollution thing. Going to the bathroom. Yep, going to the bathroom. So that ends up in the septic tank. 
GMOs is short for genetically modified organism. So, so what happens is it, it's not necessarily what was here before. We make it a little differently, and that can cause different effects. It's a, it's a lot. It's way more complicated than I want to talk about today. So, these are some of the things that we're doing. So, if we cut down a tree, what do we usually put when we cut down that tree? We build a house. So we have a house now. <laughs> and so what happens with that house? What, what, what's going on with that house? We have another tank, right? A septic tank and a leaching field. And it might have a well, so it's going to pump water out of the ground. So we have the, the water getting sucked in and through the house and out. But also every rainfall that falls on that, it used to fall on the ground and get sucked up by the tree. Now the rain falls on the roof and falls on the ground. And now we have this nice green you know, I got a nice green lawn, but if you walk through the woods, the woods aren't nice and smooth. They have little gullies. They have places for the water to sit and percolate into the ground. Your lawn, nice and smooth, that water percolates somewhat, and then the rest of it runs off, which increases what? When it runs off faster, someone said it earlier. Runoff. So what happens when the runoff's higher? Or faster. What do you get? Floods. Right. So we, we have been building all kinds of houses and all kinds of roads and things like that. And that changes the way the watershed works. It changes the way that it works so that now we have more flooding. We have all this pollution. So we have all these things that are happening to the system. Right on schedule. And this time it's going to race, right? <laughs> so. In Wayland, and I brought this, this map here. This map is a, um, something that um, our GIS coordinator, Brendan, puts together. There's a bunch of them if you go to the town website, these pre-made maps. This is, shows the town-owned land or the public land. Um, but this helped me remember the shape of Wayland so that I could draw it somewhat. And then we got that funny little chunk out of it. And it runs down like this. Something like that. That's kind of like it. Does anyone know why this, this, there's this little chunk like this at all? It, in the map, there's this little spot that's actually part of Sudbury on the west side of town. Does anyone know why that is? What? The water goes right Hmm? The river? Nope. So way back when, when Wayland was formed, the guy that owned that land didn't want to be part of Wayland. He was a farmer. And he said, I want to be part of Sudbury. So they ended up with this little chunk like that that came out of the town. And it, never it never became Sudbury. It's all part, it's part of, it never became Wayland. It's part of Sudbury. And now that's the, the old Sudbury landfill site. It's right there, pretty much. Oh, that place? They have the solar panels on top. So we have the river, right? The river runs through town. Now, we, in the town, we, we influence water in that river by what we do and how we live. So the first thing that we do, the, the first thing is we get drinking water from the town. So every time you turn on the tap, water flows out, right? Where's that water come from? The ground. So in town, we have several watt wells in town. There's actually several of them across town that we pull water from. We treat it. We do treatment processes to it to clean it up a little bit if we need to. Sometimes we just add a little bit of chemical to it to, to make it, to disinfect it, to get the bacteria out of it. And then we pump it out through the system. So about a million and a half gallons a day, a lot of water, runs out to everybody, all the users in town and it comes to the school. So the, these are the, the primary sources, and the two biggest ones are, this is called Baldwin Pond, and there's actually a treatment plant there. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then the second source, the major source, is called Happy Hollow, which is your school. And it's just down the road here. There's a, a complex of wells next to the high school called Happy Hollow Wells. And there's three places where... No, no it's not the aqueduct. You bike around there. So what happens in a well is you have the, you have the ground, right? And you punch a, a hole in the ground that has a sieve around it. And you put a pump down at the bottom and you pump out. And so the groundwater is like this without the pump running. 
So this pump, if you turn the pump on, what it starts to do is it drags the water down into the pump. So what happens is we're actually changing the groundwater. And this keeps the groundwater from going. So this happy hollow well is up near the river. So it's actually pulling the water from this large area like this. And it keeps that water from going into the river. So that actually short circuits or removes that water from being in the river for that piece of the river right there. Yes? Um, I have two questions. First one is, where is the aqueducts on the map? Um, <laughs> The aqueduct, well, they're all in the lower section here. There's, there's three of them. Oh, and then my and I, I, I do have a point. I'm going to talk about the aqueducts oh, more after. Yeah? Isn't there, like, isn't there, like, pipes under the aqueduct? Because there's these little metal things on the aqueduct. Wait. I'll, ta I'll talk more about the yeah. aqueducts later. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Is that, the, like, that huge water plant, like, up the aqueduct? Is that one of those things? Nope. No, these these are all. There's a there's a small building up behind the high school, that that represents oh, this. If you go, the Baldwin Pond is out and around the back. You'd have to you have to know that it was there. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even realize that it was there. And these are just little little buildings. They have the pumps and the chemicals in them. You would you wouldn't even know them unless you went out of your way to find them. So, this is how we get water out. Now at Baldwin Pond, the water in the ground there has got stuff in it, and just enough stuff that we have to do some treatment process to it. So at Baldwin Pond, there's a, a treatment plant, and I brought a picture of one of the plants. It's hard, I know it's going to be impossible for you to see, but this is just one of the plants. There's actually 100 pages of these that help them decide how to build that plant. So somebody had to go through and draw these all up. And this is some of the different systems in the plant that, at, that, at that treatment, water treatment plant. Now, the interesting thing at that treatment plant is they use this process. And inside this, they have these, these large tubes. This is a cutaway of, that, of this. Mem it's called a membrane system. And the, the membranes are about 10 feet tall each. So this tube is 10 feet long, and they have 60-something on them. And so inside is these, these spaghetti. They look like spaghetti, but they're actually hollow. They're like little straws. And each one of these is a filter. So what we do is we actually filter out the pollution. We pump the water in the inside of this little tube. And what happens is the clean water goes to the outside. And we use that and sell that to everybody, pump that through the system. And then the dirty stuff stays behind. And we take that and we deal with that. We manage that separately. That goes to a, a landfill. So that's how that's dealt with. And there's thousands and millions of these fibers that help treat the water to get, and the, the pollutants that it's looking for is manganese and iron. Now, you need both of those as nutrients to survive. That's part, you know, if you took a vitamin pill, it would have iron and manganese in it. But the water has too much, and what happens is it makes the water look poor and taste poor, and it can hurt the pipes, and it can hurt you by having too much of those things in it. So we have to take that out at the treatment plant. Yes? That's part of the aqueduct. I'll talk about this. I'll talk about this. Oh, or that's right. So, oh, yeah. so this is how we get water. And what happens is that gets sent out in pipes. We have 100 miles of pipes in the town, all different sizes. They run from, I think, this, what's the smallest tunnel? 16 or? We have smallest? Smallest pipe, water pipe we have. Four inches of small. No, I mean biggest, sorry. 16. 16. So we have, you know, the biggest pipe is like this. Those aqueducts <clears throat> that you keep asking about, they're huge. They're eight feet in diameter. But pipes that we have there they're about 16 inch and that's how we get the water around to everybody most of you have like an eight inch pipe in front of your house and that's enough to serve a hydrant and provide because you, if you go in your basement where your water meter is there's only a little pipe like this big because that's all you need to run your faucets or the shower or whatever whatever you do with the water so this is on the on the water side, the fresh water side, how you get that. And what that does is we're intercepting the water and we're pulling it out of the ground. So that changes how the river acts because we're taking it out here and moving it around in the town. So that's one of the ways that we influence. And it's not always a good influence. So after we've used it, it's gone through our house, right? And now we have our 
septic system that discharges it back to the ground. So that's all around the house, all around the town, but there are actually a couple of places in town where we collect the wastewater. Um, down around here, town center. Does anyone know what town center is? Where the, uh, yeah. the local is? I'm trying to think what else is there. Stop and shop, exactly. Uh, so uh, there's, a, there's actually a wastewater treatment plant there. So at the wastewater plant, we collect the wastewater from some of the houses and stop and shop and some of the businesses in that area. And we, we treat it all as one. And actually, we have a very complex system that treats the wastewater. And I actually have some visual aids on that one. So this here, this is a sample of the wastewater when it comes in. So this is all mixed together. And so it's got a gray color to it. Um, no, you cannot drink it. It's actually got so many bad bacteria, you would be very, very sick. We're going to keep it sealed in the container. So the thing is, it's, if you look at it, it looks pretty terrible. But it's actually, guess what percentage water it is? It's, you're really close. It's 99.4. So it's almost all water. And that's, that's the water that you, know, you brush your teeth with or you know, take a shower and all that stuff. That, that's all mixed together into this. So what happens at the wastewater plant is we want to clean that up because you can't send that out at the wastewater plant. We actually take the, the, after we clean it, and there's a pipe that goes right into the river. So we don't want to put that in the river, right? No. No, no that, that would violate that whole stewardship idea. It would make a mess. So we have a treatment process. So we have the wastewater, I'll just use WW, come in. And then we have a, a box. And there's a lot of things that happen in the box. The major thing is we use bacteria. And so in here is bacteria. There's about, I looked it up, like 20 billion bacteria in here. Just this little bottle here. What? No, it's actually water. So the, the brown things in here are all microorganisms. They're, they're little uh, bugs. And if I had a microscope, you could see them and see them moving around. So what we do is we take that wastewater and we take, we call them bugs. It's a nice, easy name, but they're actually bacteria. So we take bugs and we add air. We actually pump air in and they eat the stuff that's in here. They eat the, and we, it's food for them. And they eat that up. Then we use a process like this. It's a membrane, not this type of membrane, but a different type of membrane to filter the bugs out. We don't want the bugs to go out because they would be bad in the environment. So this is what goes out of the plant. Looks like drinking water. It, 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 it isn't drinking water, but um, we actually test the river. One of the tests that we have to do for the treatment plant is, is we test the river where the, our pipe is. So we, if we discharge the river here, and this is the river, we actually have to do a test here, and we test here. And the river's actually cleaner after we discharge, because the treatment plant effluent, this water here, actually serves to clean up the river a little bit, because it's so clean. It does have some pollutants in it. We have to do a lot of testing to make sure it's running right. One of the major pollutants that we have to look for is phosphorus. Have you heard about phosphorus at all? So what, what do you know about phosphorus? Yeah, it's in soaps, it's in fertilizers. A lot of fertilizers use it. And what happens when phosphorus gets into a river? It makes it green, it grows algae. And what happens when that happens? What? You can't drink it. Um, but what someone was talking about their favorite uh, water, water animal. Fish. So what happens in, if phosphorus goes into a river, you get something called, here's another shun utro, I hope I'm spelling it right. This is your new word for today. Eutrophication. Eutrophication. So what happens is, and that's the process that you guys were describing, was 
the phosphorus goes in, it grows algae, and the algae dies, and it depletes the oxygen in the water. So when the oxygen comes out of the water, who needs oxygen? The fish does. So if the oxygen isn't there for the fish, what happens to the fish? They die. They, die. they go belly up. Okay, X. So that's why we have to remove phosphorus. It's really important as part of our process. It's a dead fish. But we're doing a good job at removing phosphorus. We have, a, we have one of the tightest permits in the state in terms of what we can put into the river. And our plant, this, this water here is wonderful. It's really, really clean. Is it like faucet water? It's really, really You couldn't use it for faucet. No, they, there's a little bit more that we have to do for it, but it's, and, and most people are bothered by thinking about wastewater as, as tap water, but there are places in the world where they don't have as much water as we do. So if you go to Australia, there are places where there's lots of water in Australia, but there are places where it's really dry. And they basically take this at the out of the wastewater plant and they put it into the beginning of the water treatment plant. And most of the water is reused that way at certain places in Australia. There are other places that they do that as well. Yes? Um, are your bugs actually living? Yes, there, there are actually bacteria in here that are alive. Well, there are certain ones that are cute, actually. I mean, the, these, if you looked at them, you go, it looks like, you haven't seen a protozoa? Have you heard of a protozoa yet in the biology yet? Yes. Yes? You know, a little, uh, a little guy with a little tail and the, and the, and the fur around it. So we have those. That's what most of the ones that are in there are those things. You need a microscope. They're really tiny. So would you call those bites? So the kids went to the river in the fall. Yep. And they uh, caught, they scooped up the microorganisms from the Sudbury River and looked at them through microscopes. Yep. Is that what you're talking about, or is they, that they are similar? So what okay. so what happens at the treatment plant is we 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 what we're doing is we're actually doing something that happens in nature. We're just doing it much faster. So if we were to put this out into the river, the bugs that are in the river that you saw are there, and they would do this work here. They would eat the stuff up. It would be, it would make the river really smelly and not, you know, really appealing. But they would do that job. It would just take a lot longer. So at the wastewater plant, we accelerate that process. We get a lot of those bugs, a lots of billions and billions of those bugs all together all at once, and they do it really fast. So this takes about eight hours, whereas. If we were to do this naturally in the river, it might take five or ten days for it to happen naturally, and it would be really hard on the river to try to do that. Yes? We don't burn any directly there, but it does take energy to run the water plant. It does take a lot of energy. It's like a, the bill's about $100,000 a year. Oh. Are they solar panels? They do not have solar panels. They should. They should. We will. We will certainly look at that. Got okay. a question? No. Nope. Stretching. Yes. Um. What about like carbon? Carbon. Carbon. Well, it's. It, I'm talking more about water right now. We can talk about carbon if we have time at the end. Yes. So in, in town, to make they make about I don't know, half a million or three quarters of a million gallons of, of fresh water a day, and I think they have I think they have sixty of these big tubes to do that, and they have lots of pumps and lots of chemicals. There's a lot of stuff to do that, but that makes sure that the water is perfect for you guys to drink. Yes. They, th this keeps getting used and used. It slowly wears out. So at some point, usually after 15 years or so, you have to replace them because the, it, it's what's inside this tube is, is a, it's a little, there's all these tiny, minuscule little holes that allows the water to pass through, and it keeps the pollutants on the inside. And so what happens is those little holes start to clog, and it just makes it harder and harder to get the water through the membrane. So eventually it clogs. And that happens with all these systems. But this technology is, is really 
I want to say foolproof, but it's easier to think about because you're, you're have a, you have this hard surface that you have to get the water through. So you're going to have really good quality water all the time. Yes? I, I wish I knew that, that answer. It, it, there's a lot in here. You can take a look at it after hundreds, at least hundreds. So what, what happens is the water's getting pumped through the tube, and the clean water comes to the outside, and the dirty water stays inside. So it flows all the way through and out the other end. So you basically, you're constantly sending the dirty water through the tube, and it pushes the dirty water out the end, and the clean water passes through the inside of the tube to the outside. So that's how, we get, that's how it separates it. So you have the dirty water stays through, and it's constantly moving out of the tube as you're pumping the new water in from the bottom. Yes? Yeah. Um, so, just to add on, to my honor, but how does it know that it's the dirty water? The, the dirty water, so, the, so, in here, this is all, all packed together. It's got all this resin that holds it all together. So, what happens is, on the inside, on this side, all the the raw water, we call it raw water, it's mixed with chemicals, but the water that has the pollutants in it gets pumped in through here. So it can only go in the tubes here. And what happens is, is it's flowing out through the tubes. There's all this room inside the middle here, and that room is where the clean water comes out of it. So it, the dirty water stays inside the tube, and it, the clean water passes through to the outside. And that's how it does it. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about storm water now, unless you want to keep talking about I have, I have clean water. I have a question about that. You have a question about that? Wait, there's a lot of questions. So like, if you I have to thank the water superintendent. He let me borrow this today. If you tip that over, will all the drops? Nope, nope, because they're all glued in. Oh, they are? They're all glued in like this. Okay. Yep. Yes? If they're all glued in, then how did you get some of them out? I, they break. They can break. And that does happen. They, they slowly, that's another way that they fail is they can break a little bit occasionally because they're pretty fragile. Yes? Uh, so can you reuse the bugs? Like if the bugs are in the tank? Exactly. And that's what happens. We actually, they keep growing and we get more and more bugs. So the, the bugs will eat the wastewater and we get the clean water out here, clean water. And so they eat that food. We add air and they grow more and more of them, so we actually get extra bugs. We actually have to take some of those bugs off occasionally. All right. Last one. That's why we have we have to actually take a few off. So every day we have we have like Oh, I think it's like 100,000 gallons worth of bugs. And every day we take off about 500. We take a few off and we take them off to the side and we take them somewhere else and they get, they get treated somewhere else. The extra bugs get Because okay, the bugs only live a certain amount of time. They do die eventually. I was wondering where you put them. No, we have, we have a separate tank that they go in. And I have a picture of... They do, if you keep them around long enough, they do. You actually get more complicated bugs. One of the, one of the so the bugs, I, I know a lot about bugs, it's kind of funny, um, but most bugs, they only live about six days. But sometimes if you let your sledge get older, you get newer, di different bugs, and there's one called the water bear, and it actually looks like a teddy bear oh, yeah. under the microscope. So this is a picture of the weight, one of the pictures from the wastewater plant, Again, it was a big, lots of plants, lots of pieces of paper. So in here, we have all the different processes. And here's where the bugs do their work here. And then this is our membranes over here where they actually filter out the bugs. And we get the clean water out like we do here. So let's go on to storm water. Because storm water is the one, we seem to have a good handle on what's happening with Wastewater and water. But stormwater is kind of a thorny thing. And that and that's really what where 
I know we have to spend a lot of time, and this is where you guys are going to have to figure this out because us adults have been doing a bad job at it for a while now. So we're doing things to, to fix stormwater, and they're doing a lot of different things, but it's going to take years and years. So when you guys go out and get steam jobs, some of those steam jobs are going to be fixing stormwater. So let's talk about the stormwater system a little bit. So, so this is the rainfall, the precipitation, right? It falls on our house, falls on the driveway, falls on the road. And what happens after that? What happens after that? It goes into the sewers, or we, we, we call them storm sewers. And what's the storm sewer look like? It looks like this, right? The, the grate. Storm drain. People call it storm drain. Some people call it storm sewers. And so there's actually uh, something they call MS4. And that's, that's a short term of saying storm sewer. MS4 is municipal storm sewer, separate storm sewer system. So it's four S's and an M. That's how you get storm sewer. Or, or people just say drainage. Drainage is easy. So it goes into this catch basin here. And then it goes from the catch basin into a pipe. And then you might have a manhole. That's the round one in the middle of the road. Because that's how you collect them together. You might have two catch basins that tie to a manhole. And then it goes to a pipe. And then there might be another manhole. And then we got out to an outfall. So what, what kinds of things happen with stormwater? That, you know, we're not doing this kind of stuff with stormwater. We're not doing this, this complicated treatment process. It's very expensive to do that. So what, what are we doing with the stormwater? What happens to that stormwater? We talked about it earlier. I wrote it right here in, in permanent marker, unfortunately. But we got it off, luckily. So go ahead. Well, evaporation, but that's a slow process. It takes a lot of energy to do that. It's not really something that that is a, a big thing in stormwater. Yeah. Outfall. So an outfall is a pipe. And it the water flows out of the pipe into the river or into a stream. So if you're walking along a little stream, you might see a pipe sticking out of the wall. It might be a concrete Thing that's holding it into the wall, but that's an outfall. What's your second question? Well, they put they, they did them to put them in, and there's pipes that connect everything together. That's how we move the water to an outfall. We have to move it because if we let it all just sit here, it would flood. Right here, we're in a low area out front there, and there's actually you know a chance of flooding there because it's it's low, and so there's some pipes that kind of push it and move everything around because if we let it sit there it would fill up it could become a lake and you don't want a lake where your school is. So we have to kind of push all this water and get it to the Sudbury River. But by doing that, we're changing the way that the earth works with the river. So it gets to the river faster. Right? And what happens when it gets to the river faster? We already answered this one. Everyone? Floods? Flood? Flooding? Black floods. Black floods? Black floods. So, so what, 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 what might be happening with this water besides flash floods? We talked a lot about, about, about this stuff. storms, but what, what might happen to that water? What might be in that water? Pollutants, right. And I thought about how many pollutants might be in storm water, and I bet you we can come up with 20 without even thinking. Um, so what, think about what kind of pollution might be in stormwater. Trash. Plastic. What? Plastic. Plastic. Plastic's a nasty one. Why is plastic nasty? It's not biodegradable. It doesn't disappear that easily. It lasts for a long, long time. So banana peel, is that bad? It's not great, but it's not as bad as plastic. What about the label on the banana peel? Bad. So what else? What other kind of pollutants? Yep. Pesticides. Straws. That's plastic. That's plastic. 
Yep. Well, let's let's finish the pollutants. Chemicals. Anyone own an animal? What kind of animal? Dog. What what do dogs do? Don't tell me. <laughs> Waste, good, good, good word, much better word. Waste. Do you know, do you know that, that they've done studies and that they think that animal waste is the largest source of pollutants in rivers and streams right now? That's global warming. That's a good so animal waste is animal waste is one of the biggest problems in stormwater right now. And I own a couple of dogs, and I know that they're contributing. You know, I do the best that I can, but it's hard. It's hard to manage it, but we need, there you go, everyone needs to put a little effort out. Where do you throw it? Right, you know what some people, they actually have places where people take, pick it up and they throw it in that catch basin. They've actually found catch basins full of those little plastic bags because someone thought that it was a good idea. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> it's not going to disappear. And it's, like, it's actually worth double, double whammy. Double whammy. Yes. I'll, I'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, so as you're looking, as we're talking about this, this system is really simple. There's not a lot happening in this system. We can't, all this stuff can get in it. But did we, did we talk about bugs eating it, or did we talk about membranes? No, it's just, it's just running through. There's very little that happens. And a catch basin, though, I mean, one of the things that we do do with catch basins is, catch basin is, looks like this. They're about six feet deep. And so the water flows on the top, and then the pipe comes out the bottom. Uh, out the middle. And so what happens is if it's heavy stuff, if it's rocks or sand or sometimes leaves, it'll sit in the bottom. So we do a little bit of treatment, but that, that's maybe 20% of the stuff that's in the, in the storm water. The rest of it just flows out the pipe and then out the outfall. So right now, we have this MS4 that we we're talking about. And the EPA issues permits to people that have MS4s. Now, the town of Whalen has an MS4. It's a municipal, separate storm sewer system. So the storm sewer or the drains. So we have a permit that says we can only put out certain pollution or certain amount of pollution in our outfall. So coming out of those outfalls. Now, we have a lot of those outfalls. We've got probably 100 of them. So we have to go out and look at each outfall, and then we have to sample the outfalls to see what's in it. And then we have to go back and try to figure out what kind of pollution is in it. And then we've got to go from there to, to go trace up these pipe systems to find out where that pollution is coming from. And then we have to stop that pollution. So there's all kinds of things that we have to do to clean up the stormwater. Now, the best thing to do is to not have that stormwater at all. right? If we didn't have an outfall, I wouldn't have to worry about that. So some of the things that we're doing in town is we have our own regulations. This is a really interesting one. So if you build a new house, if you take an old house, you have a little, a little house, it's, you know, a thousand square feet. There's some more math for you. It's a thousand square feet. It's a pretty small house. And someone says, I want a bigger house on this lot. I see it all the time. People want bigger houses. So they go, I want to build a bigger house. I'm going to put a 3,000 square foot house up. So how much bigger is that? 2,000. Great. So it's delta or plus 2,000 square feet. So what they say is that if you're building a bigger house, you have to manage the stormwater that's generated from the rest of this new house. So you can't just put that in a pipe and send it away. So what they do is they build systems to manage this on the property. And one of the things that they do, it's really interesting, is they'll build a tank in the ground. They'll put a tank in the ground that leaches the groundwater in. So they'll collect the roof leaders from the house and run it to that tank. 
And so what are we doing when we put the, the, the storm water in the ground? What, what shud word was that? Is it the beginning of the... Well, it starts with a P. Percolation. So we're actually making that work better. We're actually pushing that water in the ground. So how does this help by putting this water in this tank? How does that help? So this one's a little tough. So it helps because the water's falling here on the house, and we're not putting it in a pipe and sending it a mile down the road to an outfall. We're putting it back in the ground right nearby where that water came from originally. So that keeps that water in the same place. It keeps the river working. It keeps the water balanced so that the water that fell here stays here. And then it'll slowly get into the river. And that helps with, what's that? Flooding. Flooding, it does. Because what happens is the peak flow doesn't change. It doesn't get any higher. So we will reduce flooding by installing these things. So all new houses that they build, subdivisions, they have to put in things like this to manage that stormwater. But we still have this pipe here that's doing the 1,000 square feet is still there. So we still have to look at worrying about pollution. So this is where you guys come in. You've got to figure out how to make sure that that dog waste doesn't get in there and the plastic and all that other stuff. So cigarette butts, those are, those are terrible. Those little, those little filter tips, they last forever. And they're small, so they'll flow in the water. They get down into the river. Now, I've actually kayaked the river, a good portion of the river. And it's beautiful. I don't know if you've ever been out in the river at all. I know you went out and did some sampling, correct? Or you, you went down to the river. But if you get in a kayak and you kayak, it went from Route 20 up to into Framingham, all through the river there. I saw one house. It's like wild. You can't see anything but birds. That's it. And some weeds, a lot of brush, but there's almost nothing going on. So this is where you guys come in. We have to help. We need help with this MS4. We need you guys thinking about it and worrying about pollution, making sure that that pollution isn't occurring. So if we can get rid of oil, right? Green, you know, not burn so much oil. If we can stop using so much plastic, I know the town just banned plastic bags, right? You can't go to Stop and Shop and get your plastic bag anymore. Bring your own. Bring your own bag. I have a big bag. I carry them everywhere. He does. Yes. Well, because it doesn't disappear. It, it, it doesn't, it's not biodegradable, so it stays around. It's something out there for an animal to eat, or it's something that the environment has to handle. And when we had the water cycle drawn up, when you drew the water cycle, right, you didn't have, you know, little filter butts running down the river. If it wasn't there in the water cycle, you don't want it there now. Yes. So that can happen. So you get you actually, um, if the pipe collapses or if it gets uh, too full or if it gets a clog in it. So we had a pipe not not too far from here where the we had a clog in it and it actually caused flooding and damaged the ground around it. So we had to go in and clean that pipe out. So I want I know people were asking about aqueducts and I know we don't have a lot of time left. So I want to make sure that we cover your questions on aqueducts. So one of the things I had that that rough map up and we had the wells, right? So one of the things we're talking about in town is maybe getting water from the aqueduct. Now that, there's some good things about that and there's some bad things about that. So the aqueducts are down here. There's the Weston Aqueduct, which isn't used anymore. There's the Haltman. And then there's one way, way deep down underground called the Metro West. So all three of them move the water through across the town but the town doesn't get their water from it. So you guys have been talking about the different things. If you walk the west, then there's, there's a bridge. They call it the hot dog bridge. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And so that's part of the aqueduct. That's the pipe that carries that water, the hot dog bridge. And on the, that, along that aqueduct, there's those buildings. Those buildings are access to get to that pipe and ways to get air out or water in it or things like that. They don't do, they're not active. They're not really doing anything in those buildings typically. It's just a way to get to the pipe. So the town is looking at, well, it costs us a certain amount of money to get water out of the ground and to build these things and keep these things going. It also, we have, we have a permit that tells us we can only use it a certain way. So we're looking at potentially connecting to the MWRA as our water source. 
And so what might be things that happen if we connect to the water? We've got the river here running through the side here. What will happen to the river if we connect to the MWRA? So one of the, something like that. So one of the things that's happening now is we pull water out of the ground, we water the lawns, we put it back in the septic system, and it goes back to the river. So it's this kind of little cycle that's going on here. So what happens if we don't use our wells anymore? We're actually not going to have any water coming out of the ground. All the water is just going to be coming out. So we're actually adding water to the river, which can be good if the river doesn't have enough water in it, but it also can be bad if there's too much water in it. So that's something we have to worry about when we're thinking about this, making this decision. What's, what's another part, another important piece? So when you're thinking about your next phone, what, what are you worried about? Not you, your parents. Money. <laughs> money, yes. So we've got to think about money. Because doing anything costs money, so we have to think about that. We also have to think about how do people want water from MWRA. It's different. So that's the kind of things that we're thinking about when we're thinking about aqueducts. Is anyone else, there are other questions on aqueducts, yes? Well, so on the aqueduct, uh, what type of pipes are they? Just water pipes? They're just water pipes. So, uh, so you'll see that, so you'll see that mound, right? It looks like that. Yeah. And so in that mound is a big pipe. It's very, like, four to six feet down. It's a big pipe. I think the Holtman's an eight foot diameter. I think the Weston's six or seven. It's, I, I believe it's cast iron, the pipe. Oh, so that's like that elevated part? Like it's like so when you see that mound, in the middle of that mound is the, is the pipe itself. It's buried underneath. Is the metal part on that? Uh, sorry? Is the metal part on that one? So the metal, the, metal, the cast iron, the, the, the pipe itself is metal. But anything that's metal above isn't really part of the part of the pipe. You, w you wouldn't see the pipe exposed. Yes. Um, so on top of the mountains, there's normally those little buildings. What are those? So the buildings are just accesses. So, and usually they're at high points. So what happens is when you're flowing water, like in the hot dog bridge here, what happens is when the water slows down, sometimes you can get air at the top. So you need a place to get the air out. So they'll put a house there, or they might have a valve. To close off the pipe, there might be a valve in there, so they want to be able to turn that pipe off. There's a, there's a bunch of reasons they might put the houses in. Yes, sir. Um, I think that's the Western Aqueduct. Okay. The Western. The Western. Yes. Biodegrade. Bio exactly how it sounds. Bio this E may be, I think that E is there. Yes. <coughs> well, they, they, most of those houses go into septic systems. So they have a little tank in the ground, and then it leaches into the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <coughs> Sorry? The, the school, Weston. Weston. The Holtman's a little bit more south than me. So I got like four minutes, and I can... I can ask, you can ask me questions about anything that I might know about. Because as an engineer, I, want, I, I didn't talk about this earlier, there are all kinds of engineers. There are lots of different engineers. And I went to school for civil engineering. And it's not to be polite, although I can be polite. Um, I went to school for civil engineering. And that, 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 I always, people say, what is a civil engineer? They're people that build things that don't move. So if it doesn't move, typically, then you're kind of a civil engineer. So I do civil engineering, and there's lots of different types of civil engineer, because there's all different types of, of, of specialties. And so to know all about this stuff that I've talked about is a water resource engineer, and that's mostly what I do. But I went to school, I learned structural engineering, I learned 
um, which is how to buildings and how to make beams and all that kind of stuff. You can learn transportation engineering, which is roads and traffic and that kind of stuff. There's geotechnical engineering. You learn about soil and how that works and how to build foundations and dams and things like that. There's so many different kinds of engineering. and it's, You can learn so much and have so much fun in just a little fragment, but it's all important. We all, it all needs to happen in order for us to live and, and work and be part of this planet. Yes? Um, I have another, um, Go ahead. Pollutant. Pollutant. Okay. Oil. oil. You lost the list, but oil is a big one. How long does it take to get a, to get a water bed? How long does it take? They, well, they have to naturally occur, but they, they usually they live for like a month. Um, they, it's kind of random when they appear. It's really hard to find them. They're very rare. I've only ever seen one in my whole, I've been doing this for 30 something years and I've only ever seen one. Um, um, isn't like another, like a very big kind of like, like horse? Horse, well there's not as many horses as dogs. Just about everybody has a dog. Not everyone has a horse. And, and dog waste is, they eat different food than horses. So horse waste, they, they eat Doggy. organic, like, like fruits and vegetables, that kind of stuff, grains. And so that their waste isn't actually as bad as dog waste, because dogs eat more meat. Yes? Um, I keep picking on you, but go ahead, quickly. So, not to, so if, where do those pipes, like, where do all pipes end up in the same place? Like, do nope. they end in the same place? Nope. nope. So are they called, so where would So which, which pipes are we talking about? The aqueducts. The aqueducts, okay. Well, the aqueducts all start in the middle of Massachusetts at a place called the Quabbin Reservoir. So this is, if you look at a map of Massachusetts, there's this big kind of funky looking lake. And I was going to look up how many billions of gallons are in this lake. It's some enormous number. I don't know what it is. 412 billion? Okay. And then this water goes through a pipe, and it runs to another reservoir called the Wachusett Reservoir, which is out in Holden and West Boylston, out that way. And then it starts to run in these other pipes like, to get to the different places. There's a lot of different pipes that it runs to get to Boston, because this serves mostly Boston, this water. And it just so happens to pass through Wayland to get there, and that's why the aqueducts are there. Well... No, no, this is this is this is enormous compared to Dudley Pond. Yeah, no, it's way out way it's central Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Is the lake you're talking about bigger than Wayland? Oh yes. Much, much bigger. They actually they built it. So there's a big dam that they put up and they actually had to I believe it's four towns disappeared when they built the Quabbin Reservoir. There were four towns where that, that lake was. Um, the only one that I the one of the, the only one that I know the name of is because there's one in Connecticut, uh, the same town name. It's just south of Hartford. Hartford, Hanbury, no. uh, Enfield. Enfield was one of them. I can't remember the other three. But they actually took the houses and moved them. I have a book in the classroom all about it. Yeah. Yes. Where is Dudley Pond on the map? Dudley Pond is right here. Where's 25 pounds? I know. I <laughs> take it too long. Yes. All of what? This thing here? No. Oh, the aqueducts? No. Oh, so the water treatment plant, I, I, I don't know what the original price was, probably 10 or 12 million, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. Um, the wastewater plant cost about 6 million to build that. Um, so it's, it, it's very expensive to build these things. And then after you build it, you still need electricity. You still need people to work these things. So it all costs money to, to make sure. But that money makes sure that the uh, water, when we're all done, looks like that. Mm -hmm. Or it's nice and drinkable coming out of the faucet. You can go, yep, I have no problems with this. I'm happy with it. Yes? Right, stormwater management. It does, it, do, it does, but what happens is it's not running across the ground anymore, picking up that pollution. It's only from the roof, so it doesn't have a whole lot of, it only gets the pollution from the air and what's on the roof. It's not like 
the streets are really dirty. Or you go through like a parking lot. There's all the sand in the parking lot. There's all the bits of cars because the car, the car's rusting. So there's zinc and metal that's coming off the car that's falling on the ground. And when the water runs over it, it grabs that stuff up. So if you do it local by the house, that's less likely to occur. So there's a lot less pollution when you do that. Yes? Aqueduct, um, they don't build them a lot anymore. They're very expensive. Do you know what Metro West cost? It, 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 insane amount of money, but the tunnel is 50, more than 50 feet down, right? Yeah, it's 26 miles long. 26, it was probably somewhere, in, it was probably $50 million or more. I, I bet you it was, I, I, it's probably a couple hundred million if I think about it. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of money to, to, to build stuff these days. Yes? I think there's 60, 60 of them, somewhere around that number. I'm not sure. I don't do that every day. Yes? Um, what other, like, or things are really bad for the earth? So, like, where, I mean, it, it just if you look, look at a big picture, if you're changing the way that the earth was from what it, that original water cycle, if you're doing something, it's probably not a good thing. So we end up having to build more stuff to make sure that we're not impacting things as much. So it, it, you know, it's just about everything that you're doing. So whatever you can do to make it as much like we are here, <laughs> that's going to be the best thing overall when we're all said and done. Yes? Yes? Exactly. Exactly. I saw you. Don't worry. You're right there. Exactly. But like an H2O, the two stands for two O's, right? No, it stands for two H's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oxygen <laughs> and a hydrogen. Yeah. 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 MSS4 than saying MSSSS. In this case, they do. I don't think that there's a, a scientific convention. That's chemistry. Yes. Sorry? Oh, there are a lot. And that, that's one of the. That's actually a very important point, and that's important with septic systems even. So what happens is, she asked about chemicals that are hard to get out, and that biodegradable word. That that's really what it comes down to is they make so many different chemicals nowadays because everyone wants everything to be perfect and they want to feel healthy all the time and they you, you want your shiny hair and you want you know. You, you, you want all, everything to kind of be great. So we have all these chemicals that we've made to deal with that. But what happens is those chemicals, the bugs don't like. They don't biodegrade that well. So what happens is they get into the groundwater, they get into the water supply, they get into the river, and the animals don't know how to deal with those things. So there's, they, I'm trying to remember the acronym. It's pharmaceuticals and personal care products. So those types of chemicals. So one of the antibacterial soap. I don't like that stuff. You know why? Because why? if it kills bacteria, <laughs> it, kills bacteria. It, kills, it kills the good bacteria, it kills my bugs. And so it can't be degraded. So that stuff sits around a really long time. One of, one of the, um, you ever heard of PCBs? No. No, uh, no. Computer no, no. It, it, you're, you're too young for it. It's, it's a chemical that was around pretty popular in the 60s and 70s. And it, it's very dangerous, but it's really dangerous because it sits around forever. It doesn't break down. Well, what about the mercury in the bottom of the river? Oh, mercury. Yeah, so, so the, the mercury is from a, a plant called Nyanza in Ashland. Nyanza. And so they had a process there that used mercury. And the mercury is it's an element. I don't know if you've had any chemistry yet, but it's, it's a basic form. You can't make it. You can't make it disappear, but it's a very dangerous chemical. And so they discharge out of their outfall 
they sent mercury out of their outfall into the Suasco, into the into the Sudbury River, and this went all down and into the ponds and all the lakes and streams. That's why there's signs all over that say, what's it say about the fish? I know they're your buddies, but you can't eat them because of the mercury. And it's really hard to deal with mercury. They, I actually read a couple of studies on how they're going to deal with the mercury. And right now, I think the, the, the plan was to basically cover it and ignore it. Because we really don't know what to do with it right now because it's just too difficult. Because if they try to dig it up, it's just going to spread it everywhere and make it worse than it I is hope now. I one of these kids invents the best way to do it. I, it would be lovely if one of these kids did that. That's up all the water. That's heavy. That's heavy. Um, who hasn't asked a question yet? Yes, sir. Well, um, I know in, in Deadly Pond, um, you're not allowed to eat the fish from that because of the mercury. Is that from the Nyanza plant? Probably not. So one of the mercury sources is, and we, we talked about this, well, people kept asking about it, is uh, we have a, a power plant, right? And it's burning coal. I'm not a real coal fan. Um, so if, if, when you burn coal, there's actually all kinds of other pollutants in coal, and one of the pollutants is mercury. So the mercury goes up the stack into the air, and what happens when we have precipitation? It rains and it drags the mercury down, and the mercury will end up in Dudley Pond. Not just Dudley Pond, but it ends up in rivers and streams everywhere. And I, I don't know for sure that that's the reason Dudley Pond has mercury issues, but it's a major issue for, for um, water bodies in the eastern, northeastern Massachusetts, because there's a lot of coal plants out in the Midwest, and so all the smoke comes up in the Midwest and it travels this way because the winds blow this way. When it rains, it drops all the mercury on the ground here. Yes, sir? Don't light bulbs use mercury to like... To so light fluorescent light bulbs have a nanogram or something, a really, really, really tiny amount of mercury in them, yes. Um, LEDs do not. That's what LEDs are a light bulb. Yes? Um, can I Yes, old, old thermometers use mercury. Um, you don't find them that often because mercury is very dangerous. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Everyone seen that movie or heard of it? There's a character called the Mad Hatter. You know why he's mad? He's mad because of mercury. Because in the old days, people that made felt hats used mercury as part of that process. And so they would get the mercury in them and it would make them mad. So that's why it's the Mad Hatter. Oh, that's scary. Biodegradable? Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know. I, biodegradable is the one that I use, but I, there's probably another name for it. Yes. Bio what? Bio D? You could start that one, put it out on your Twitter, and everyone will be using it before you know it. Yes, sir? Um, so, is there mercury in the lithium batteries? Is there mercury where? Lithium batteries? Um, I, I really don't know. I doubt it. I know that the older alkaline batteries used to have a little bit of mercury in them, but I don't know that. I think that as we do newer, lithium is like a newer type of battery. They try to make things cleaner. They try to have less of those things in I mean, there's mercury everywhere. There's a little bit of mercury in it. Teeny, teeny, tiny bit of mercury in you. It's just you've got to keep it to that teeny, tiny amount and not add more by, you know, breathing uh, broken fluorescent light bulbs or what? drinking the water from the Sudbury or those kinds of things. Yes? <laughs> what is mercury? It's, it's a element. It's a basic building block. So when we have H2O, right? There's an eight, two H's and an O. Well, this is like another one of those types of things. At some point, take chemistry. It's wonderful. It's yeah. really, really fun to learn about chemistry. Lots of math. I know you're excited about math, and you will be after this. You're all going to go, when do we have math next? Are you guys have math next? Tomorrow you have math? Excellent. Well, maybe they'll do a special math today just for you guys. Yes. 
Sorry, are people trying to figure out what? Other ways to reduce mercury? They're, they're, as if they can ban it from stuff, they just don't use it anymore. They used to use it in everything because it's so good at, at um, keeping things from growing and hurting things. They used to use it in paint and just everywhere. It ended up in all kinds of stuff. And they just said, it's too bad for people. It's really, really bad to have it around. So they try not to use it at all to avoid it altogether. Yes? How big are the diameter? I, I don't know. It, I, should have, I should have gotten more information on it. It's about the size of a piece of spaghetti, though. Maybe a small spaghetti. It's about how big it is. But they, they come in different sizes. We actually have another. At the high school, there's a wastewater treatment plant. We have very similar to this, but those straws in there are the size of straws. They're much bigger than this, but it's just a different process. Yes? I have two questions. Well, it's a sport. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. You eat what you catch? Okay, that's fine. But you kill it if you get the And my second question is, who touch that? Um, it's up to the up to the teachers. We're, we're good? Yeah, yeah, it's lunchtime. So. It's lunchtime. Oh, wait, for the world, let's give a big round of applause.